today that the favor of God will be sufficient unto us to do the things that are pleasing in his sight because that will be to our own advantage. Today we are going to read James chapter 5, James chapter 5 verses 19 and 20. James 5, 19, 20. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. Let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way. Now, don't think that you very easily find a man who does not do anything wrong. The tendency is almost certain that you will find the person who does wrong. But when he does wrong, what does the scripture say? We have just read it. Does it say you are the one that will go around backbiting the fellow, talking to everybody about what wrong he has done, which is what many people do? Does it say your business is to sit around and criticize everyone that you think has done wrong, which is what some of us are doing? No. Find a way of turning him from that path of evil onto the path of righteousness. Prayers, where possible, speaking with the person, counseling, or directing the person to where he could find godly counsel that he will turn away from the path of destruction. Because every path of evil is a path of destruction. He said, Because whoever turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul. Which means if that fellow continues down that path, that part of evil, that's the part of soul destruction. You can save that soul today. You can refrain from criticizing and become the one that is building up. You can refrain from condemning because that's what we do. You condemn the next person in spite of the fact that you are doing something worse than that. And you are not ever, ever likely to think that you are doing anything worse. Or even doing anything bad. Because we have this attitude of justifying everything we do. And even where you want to accept guilt, not directly, you will try to blame it on another person. It's because of this thing, that's, that is why I behave like this and all of that. But what's the meaning of all of those excuses? You can help your brother. Same way as another person can help you. Because you, whereas you think you are not doing wrong, you are still doing wrong. Somebody else needs to pray for you. Somebody needs to uphold you, both in prayer and in action. In action, coming close to you, giving you a direction in the path you should follow. I want to say that some of us have become far too big to be corrected. Far too self-satisfied to think that we have done anything wrong. And I want to encourage you, if you're a child of God, somebody tells you, I think what you were doing may not be necessarily right. Try to listen to the person before you quarrel. Well, but if you approach someone and he quarrel with you, does that mean that you reject the person and condemn him? No, you go back and pray for him. That God will open his eyes by the Holy Spirit to see the error of his situation. We have a duty to uphold each other in prayer. Uphold him. In prayer, take him up, take her up. Let this be a clarion call for all of us to watch out for one another. Not so that we can condemn, not so that we can look down on them. And never ever help another person thinking that you are doing better than that person. You are not. There are areas in which you fail woefully. So as you are helping that person... Know that if you stretch help to that person, God will also provide help for you. Somebody else somewhere will be helping you also. This is a symbiotic relationship when it comes to holding, standing up to God's standard. Don't think that on your own you're able to do it. Maybe you are, I wouldn't know. 
But I would think that you should better submit yourself to good counsel wherever there is. I pray that all of us will learn to reach out to each other in prayers and intercession. And then try to see how possible it is to contact the person involved directly. But when you want to contact anybody directly in terms of correction, take a time and pray. It would be much, much better if you were able to pray in such a way that the Holy Spirit can give you direction as to what to do. Because sometimes you could assume that a person has done wrong, but that's not what God is seeing. So don't sit down and say, well, this person has done wrong. I'm going to speak with him. Ask the Holy Spirit first. First of all, is this thing wrong or right? Number two, should I be the one to speak with him? Because the person may be wrong and it's not for you to be there. Not for you to speak to such a person. Then pray that God will provide the person that will speak to him or her. This is important. Hold up each other. Because when you do, you are covering a multitude of sins. But more importantly, you are saving a soul from death. And whatever you sow, you reap. If you sow the saving of souls from death, you obviously will reap saving of your own soul. If you sow the covering of a multitude of sins, you will also reap that same coverage for your life. Bless each other. Bless them that are useless. Pray for them that God will turn them around. And most especially, members of the household of faith, pray for each other. May the Lord guide you. Father, let there be guidance. When these prayers are offered in sincerity, not those who are hypocritically trying to condemn others in the name of prayer, but everyone that is sincere, Holy Spirit, reach them. Give instruction and guidance. And may that work be fruitful in turning men again back to the kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.